Thank you. Okay, um, so the world would be a much better place if we had more permaculturists. Um, I found myself asking, how can I find, I found myself searching um, for ways to find um, food security, sustainability, and how to reduce my ecological footprint. So I ended up in Cuba on a trip, and most people thought I was white sand, blue skies, but what I was really doing was researching permaculture. And per Cuba is a world leader in permaculture. Most people don't know that. And, whew, I'm really nervous. <laughs> I'm totally going to go off the slides. <laughs> this is what I really did in, in Cuba, which is a lot different. And I had a really hard time trying to explain what I was doing in, in Cuba. So this is an oxen plow. Um, the guy, one guy has his nuts cut off and he, lis he listens, the other one without it doesn't. <laughs> so what is permaculture? Um, it's about working with nature. It's, it's a design framework and it's actually a way of thinking and the Cubans even teach it in their universities. They, um, they use it as a way to live almost. Um, and so it's a set of principles that bring us to a symbiotic way of living. And so this is a picture of a, a garden that would show us how permaculture actually works. It looks like a forest, it looks pretty natural, but it's not, it's actually cultivated. So natural habitats for plants and animals, um, the soil remains intact and it needs little watering. Uh, here is a couple, this is a sketch indicating what a cup of permaculture tea would look like if a permaculturist made it. It's regenerative, it's cyclical, and you can see everything kind of works together. Um, if we made it in our modern industrial world, it would look a lot different than this. For example, you can see all, we have all the inputs here, most of them are similar, but you look at our outputs and they're alarmingly wasteful. Um, permaculture teaches us not to do this. Permaculture teaches us to work in such a way that we can have a regenerative way of living um, without using industrial processes, oil, and modes of transport. So, at Stantec, we do a lot of drawings, and so it was really interesting to see that permaculturists actually do, a same, do the same thing. They're a grassroots culture, so um, I was kind of proud to say that I was doing something that was kind of similar that I, to I, what I was already doing, but so different. I felt like a hippie in Cuba, but I work in an office, so I'm not a hippie. But um, this is a garden, and you can see it's purposefully designed with curbs, but that's not to make it look nice. It's so that you can access it. Walkways are minimized, the garden is maximized, and access from all points is, is, is easy to do for the gardener. Here's a food forest. Uh, this is a very young food forest. It's got coffee beans, uh, mango, papaya, and as it's young, right now, it doesn't have a lot of shade, but when it grows, it will have much more shade, and more things can be planted later on. So it has a very high food yield um, at the end of the day. Um, so, and these are, this is us, my group, uh, with machetes. Uh, we were, we had a little bit of knowledge and a machete, and they sent us off into the forest. And I was like this Amazon woman, like, okay, I'm gonna cut everything down. Um, but yeah, we thought we were gonna take over the world. I kind of think our teachers have this like thing that there's like this world domination happening for permaculturists. Permaculturists are really good at um, rainwater catchment. This used to be a tiny creek running through the property. And it's a 10 hectare property, and now it actually serves um, the property, all the water needs, no well and uh, there's food forests, gardens, and a bunch of other things. This is a house on the property. Um, we've got rainwater catchment barrels uh, that capture the rainwater, the sun heats it, and then it's gravity fed down into the home. So it's all a very natural process. The house is actually designed with brick and concrete, which harvests heat and also keeps it cool during those really hot days. Animals are super important to permaculture, especially bees, and you might know that um, one in three bites of our food are po directly pollinated by bees. So um, keeping animals keeps the, every single farm diverse. So even manure from the animals is super important. But the most important thing is the people. 
that was what moved me the most about this trip. I thought I was learning about plants, animals, bugs, dirt, whatever. But I learned that it was actually the people, the community, and that when we actually can all come together, we truly are better. There was, it was just the most amazing experience. So this was our group. We were all laughing. I learned to speak Spanish with these people, and they, they brought me into their home, into their gardens, and let me help them, even though I really didn't really know what I was doing. So we can take this information and learn how to bring it into our rural lives. So, but maybe you're not ready to bring a composting toilet into your home. <laughs> I'm not. Not yet. Soon, one day. Don't ask what the bottle's for. <laughs> but I will say that there's many other ways that we can bring the concept, the idea of permaculture, because it's a, actually a way of thinking. Like this fence. This is a cactus fence. It's natural, it's inexpensive, it's acoustically sound, and it's visually sound. And it also, you know, they, I heard one time that a fence makes a good neighbor. And a bad neighbor makes good fertilizer. <laughs> so this is my Stantec plug, because I'm a really good employee, I think. Um, this is a willow fence on 91st Street in um, Millwoods. And so this is a really great way to show how uh, our engineering department can actually implement a fence in the same way. It was used for acoustic properties. They voted for a concrete fence. And that's what happened. So how do we make this happen? Less ego, more eco. In the end, nature doesn't belong to us. We belong to it. Thank you. <laughs>